I make technical videos, right? And I edit my technical videos. Um, so when I watch other technical videos, I really pay attention to how they are editing their technical content. So even though, of course, basic topic, whatever, we can be jealous that this person gets 11 million views for this basic video, whatever, doesn't matter. But this video has, you know, is edited and stuff like this. Is, this is the amount of editing I like. Of course, design-wise can be more beautiful and stuff, but, but of course, I don't do this for my videos as well. In this video, we'll see how passwords are really cracked. Passwords are not saved as plain texts. Any website of this age on the internet uses a hashing algorithm to encrypt and manage passwords. There are many types of hashing algorithms like the SHA1, MD5, etc. As an example for this video, let's consider Facebook. Starting out with kind of like, you know, done with slides or something, uh, or in the clear stuff, you know, not a text editor, not notepad or something like this. And then even here, when showing a website, not just screen recording where you can see the the windows bar and the browser uh, top bar is actually a good secret tip to not uh, record the window of the of this browser window because that tells you how old a certain recording is obviously this website also looks a bit older already dated but uh, that's just because it's facebook um but I, I mean, like, you can't tell if this was like recorded on Windows XP or if this was recorded on Windows 10, right? So it's easier to survive for a longer amount of time because it doesn't feel so outdated. So I think that was a conscious decision to just record this. You know, this is editing efforts. Let's consider Facebook. In order to log into your Facebook account, now, as an example for this video, let's consider Facebook. Now, what's a bit lazy is, I guess, here having the... Uh, but, I mean, that happens for me, too. Or sometimes I forget to delete the suggestion boxes from previous things I entered. In order to log into your Facebook account, you enter your email and password and click on login. Here, zooming in on the important things so the viewer know where to focus on things. All these things is editing, and I really appreciate that. The first time you create a Facebook account, you are asked to fill in a form like this, which contains your name, your email address, and it asks you to choose a password, your birth date, and your gender. Once you click on sign up, this data is sent to the Facebook's backend database. In the Facebook's database, your name, your gender. Look at this, putting real effort into uh, animating and visualizing how the database looks like, that it looks like a table and so forth. This is not a shitty, you know, low effort uh, video gender, your age, and your email or phone is saved as it is. But what about the password? As I told you, a password will never be saved. I like this. Uh, it's not just telling us how the password is done, but posing a question. Okay, so the data is in here, but what to do with the password? Saved as a plain text in a website's database. So this password is given as input to a hashing algorithm. And the output given by this hashing algorithm is the encrypted form of the password, which appears to be random, but is not. This hashed password is saved in the Facebook's database, but not the plain text, which means the password which you entered will never be saved on Facebook's database as a plain text. Instead, only it's encrypted or in other words, the hashed password. So he uses here the words encrypted, but then says in other words, hashed. I think it's totally fine. Of course, it's not encryption. And I would, I would, my expectation is that this person who says that knows that because obviously they are generally technical kind of like accurate with everything. But regular users obviously don't understand the word hashing. I think it's still important to mention it and generally use the word hashing. And he does that. He mentions hashing algorithms and that this is hashing, that this is called hashing. He, there's MD5 and like still mentioning that, but then also throws in one time, it's like it's, it's encrypted. Well, well, it's technically wrong. A person who does not understand hashing the whole time, now they hear encryption and they understand that it's like scrambled differently, right? I, I've done this in, I do this in videos sometimes as well, where I say something that's technically not quite accurate, but I say it because it helps me better make something understandable. 
and it's like only half true or something you know um so uh yeah i mean here um uh, here's food for thought if your password is shorter than the half hash bit length could you maybe even call this encryption it's a one time pad matching entire strings to a certain hash and that hash so to say vice versa if you have a one time we we call one time pads to be encryption can we here say that this is a one time pad between a password and a hash and if you have the one time pad you know the the mappings between those things uh no just saying I, what i'm just saying is i wouldn't criticize this in this case to call this encryption just because this uh, um he is mentioning um hashing all the time and it's just using it one time here i guess my uh, using here for the first time now just to emphasize for people who are not technical that this password is not in plain text anymore it's en encrypted you know it is saved in the facebook's database now suppose facebook had a data breach and hackers managed to gain access to Facebook's user info, which included their name, age, gender, email, and password. Though hackers have this information, they will not be able to log into any specific user account because the password is encrypted. If the hacker tries to log into any specific user account with the hashed password, he will not be provided access. He only needs to enter the password. Yeah, this is also good. Just to visualize that this doesn't work, you know, this person could just sit there and just mention this or not mention it at all, but it might help to further solidify what it means to have a hash password that if they steal now this password, obviously that doesn't work to log in um, and creating footage for all of this and recording it. Now here, this he was lazy. I just realized, look at this app bar uh, here. I mean, everything still displayed here. Terrible editing. Which is in the plain text form. So what do the hacker do now? Intuitive. I like this. I like asking questions. So what does the hacker do now? This is the way how I like to think about my scripts and stuff as well. The only possible way is to reverse the hash into its plain text form. But this is highly impossible because a hash is a one-way function. And the plain text... See the terminology one way function. So yeah, this this person, I mean, has a certain, you know, base education level of IT for sure. Um uh yeah. I mean it's a it's it's a it's a technical term, but um it's also understandable for common people just because it's very descriptive, I guess. This form of a hash cannot be obtained from the hash itself. That is how hashing algorithms are designed. So what now? This is when the strength of the password comes into the play. If you're using a common password like test123456, which I used earlier to sign up for Facebook, then the hacker will easily be able to know the plain text form of your password from the hash string. There is something known as rainbow tables. These rainbow tables contain the password hashes of numerous commonly used passwords along with their plain text forms. So the hacker will be able to do a simple search with the password hash that he has. And if the password hash exists in the rainbow table, that means that the password is successfully cracked and we now have the password in a plain text form. Remember that rainbow tables contain the password hashes of only the passwords which are commonly used. As a reference, you can try it yourself at crackstation.net. But what if the password is not a commonly used password? In that case, rainbow tables are of no use. So there comes dictionary attack and brute force attack. Both are quite similar. In dictionary attack, you have a word list. A word list is nothing but a huge text file with loads of passwords. In this attack, the hacker writes a code which compares the password hash to be cracked with the password hash of each. And What's happening here with this editing? Sometimes stuff is like fr flickering in and out and then, um, I don't know. Writes a code. There was here just on a on code which compares here. I have it. Sorry, I'm going a frame by frame. No. Writes a code. Which, which compares. Hashes matched. Ah, okay. 
compares the password hash to be cracked with the password hash of each and every password that exists in the word list file. If any hashes match, then it means that the cracking is successful and we now have the plain text of the hashed password. Now this attack can be target specific as well, which means you can actually create your own word list targeting a specific individual provided that you know some basic details about him and assuming that he used his basic details to frame his password. This attack can be a success or a failure based on the quality of the word list that you are using. In a brute force attack, each and every combination of letters, symbols and numbers are converted into their hash forms and are then compared with the password hash which is to be cracked. In other words, you are literally taking every possible password that can exist, convert it into its hash and check if the hashes match. So yes, it literally takes forever to crack a strong password using this method. However, if the computer's processing speed is fast enough, then yep, simple passwords can be cracked easily by this method. A new technique called salting is introduced by security analysts to give hackers a hard time in cracking passwords. In this technique, a specific combination of characters are inserted at specific positions of the plain text password before hashing. Every company has its own salting algorithm and they don't make their salting algorithm public. Nah, that is wrong. Uh... There are some very well-defined ways how salting is done or should be done. Just because when you do your own salting, maybe it's ineffective or uh, not ideal or something like this. So uh, it's not true that this needs to be secret. In what needs to be secret is maybe the value you salt with. Uh, but generally, no, no, not even that is a secret. You usually store, you have to store the salt next to the password, of course because you need to obviously do this to verify the hash. I'm, I'm an idiot. But yeah, so this is, um, yeah, there are industry standards, so to say, like typical salt and hash algorithm combinations. For example, let's say Facebook salting algorithm inserts a string F ampersand 2P at the beginning, after the third character and at the end. After the third character, but then does it after the fourth must feel bad in a 11 when 11 million people see your horrible mistakes end of the plain text password after salting the password the salted password is then hashed by a hashing algorithm so when a salt is used rainbow tables are of no use even if the password to be cracked is a weak and commonly used password because the hash of the password without salting do not match the hash of the password which is salted also, brute force attack and dictionary attack are not effective to crack salted passwords unless the hacker already knows the salting algorithm employed by a company. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you like this video and also don't forget to subscribe for more awesome videos. Comment down below if you have any doubts regarding this video. Cool. Yeah, I like it because it was, um, you know, well edited. It wasn't a lazy technical video. Um, I wish more people would invest into editing the technical videos. Oh my God, see, it's full, comments full of these kind of spams. Bro, we got hashcat, hash passwords aren't the problem. Getting into the database is the problem. See, spam again, after a series of searching for help, I finally found someone, blah, 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 for Instagram, say check. Full, full, everywhere, everywhere this kind of spam on these hacking videos. Terrible.